So this is kind of a quick video on something I've built up recently um, about controlling your fermentation temperature, why that's important for productivity. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit through the theory, uh, some sort of describe the setup that we've got running here, and then I'm going to show the actual setup. So if you plot the productivity of alcohol that the yeast is producing over a range of temperatures, you kind of find that there's a sweet spot right around 32 degrees Celsius. So our working temperature optimum is about 32 degrees C. And anywhere within that, because of the nature of a maximum, we're not going to lose too much productivity for a relatively large change in temperature. But also, because it's an optimum, as soon as we get over this certain hump, then we'll start losing productivity very quickly as we change temperature. So pretty much anything within one or two degrees of 32 degrees C is going to be pretty close to the optimum production rate, and that's really what we're shooting for. Um, you're not going to get too big of an increase by getting it exactly on 32. You just got to kind of get in that range. Obviously, going higher than this is going to be bad for the yeast, and anything lower than this is going to be bad for the yeast. Uh, really, this works just because the the proteins in the actual yeast that are fermenting, that are doing the fermentation and uh, anaerobically processing the glucose into ethanol, they don't operate as efficiently at higher temperatures as they do lower temperatures. So we run it right at a, at a singular temperature. Now, in industry, how this is done is that they take a big vat, this is kind of this purple outline right here, um, and they have a heating coil which moves heat, or Q, the uh, Q dot, into the system uh, at the same rate that heat is leaving the system. And heat will probably be leaving the system because your temperature working is going to be higher than your ambient temperature outside the vessel. So the heat's going to transfer from hot to cold. Uh, now if you can keep the Q going into this heating coil or heating pad or whatever it's going to be, or maybe it's a water jacket, equal to the heat that's going to be leaving just naturally, then you can have a constant temperature inside your closed system. Now, we don't really have that uh, nice of a system, so what we try and do is we set up a system where our yeast is fermenting in our vats and that the temperature ambient is the same as what we want our working temperature of the yeast to be. So this Q right here moving in between the ambient and the yeast is going to be equal to each other because the uh, temperatures are equal to each other. So we put a big system around all of our yeast and we just heat that, the air inside of it, and hopefully if we've insulated it right we'll have our Q being very very low. And so we don't have to heat very much because not much is leaving and we don't have to worry about sort of heating up anything, you know, having coils inside these vessels because the temperature ambient is going to decrease this Q uh, into its equilibrium so that you have just as much heat kind of going in as you do coming out uh, naturally. Now what does that look like in sort of a DIY scale? I put this together uh, a little bit this past weekend and what we have is just a basic um, cooler so that's our nice insulated system. We've got a little bit of a brain on the side that I'll explain and inside the cooler, we have four uh, gallon glass jars fermenting. Um, so I'll go through kind of the pieces and parts and how this works. There's a small thermal probe on the inside right here, and that measures the temperature uh, from an Arduino. And the Arduino then has a couple relays attached to it to turn on a 15 watt light bulb and this small case fan. Uh, and that's I mean, that's pretty much the whole thing. If it's too cold, we'll turn the heat, uh, the light bulb on. And once it gets up to a certain temperature, we'll turn the light bulb off. And we'll let it naturally settle down until it's a little too cold again, and we'll heat it up again. Case fan just keeps all the air mixed around so that we're not getting really hot right here and maybe colder off in this corner so that our temperature probe is, is working fine. That fan's only on when it's heating, though, although that's not really important. Uh, I set up my one-way valve. Uh, 
basically we're putting a barb in the top of each one of these fermenters going through a tube uh, and then down into this water bottle where it's submerged underneath the uh, height of the water and so you can see it's it's bubbling up through there and the CO2 is coming out here and naturally just kind of making its way around here. I have a quick thermometer um, you can see that it's well, maybe you can't see but it's uh, right about 90 degrees something like that again as long as you're kind of within that range you'll be fine this uh, setup over here it's kind of a rat's nest but it's a pretty simple setup you've just got a 12 volt power supply running into a 5 volt converter and that powers the Arduino and the Arduino has got a little bit of code on it so it reads the temperature every five minutes or rather five seconds and then it controls two relays one relay just puts 12 volts into the case fan that's pretty simple uh, our solid state relay for the AC circuit wanted a little bit more juice than what the Arduino could put out so the so I've got the 12 volt running from the power supply into the relay and then once that turns over and clicks on then that'll actually enact this relay too um, and that's a pretty simple setup and pretty much just keeps our yeast fermenting right at that 32 degrees low, 32 degrees Celsius level um, yeah